Welcome back. In the wake of the death of New Mexico State Police Officer Darian Jarrett, behind the badge, New Mexico would like to bring awareness to the real dangers of the job as a police officer. Crystal spoke with behind the badge NM board member Rob Mitchell about these types of dangerous situations that can happen on any given day. Joining us this morning, we have Rob Mitchell with Behind the Badge, New Mexico. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for asking. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Rob, because we're covering a very sensitive but important topic this morning. We're talking about um, in the wake of the death of the New Mexico State Police Officer Darian Jarrett. You're really trying to focus and, and bring awareness on the real dangers that officers face on a daily basis. So I, I want to talk about that right off the bat. Um, you know, we've seen uh, several officer-involved shootings across the U.S. recently, some during unrest, others happening as um, officers are just doing their typical day-to-day -day job. How dangerous is it for officers? Well, that's what's, what's interesting. You know, the public doesn't see the day-to-day -day operations of the police officer. And we respond to many different types of calls from domestic violence to uh, neighbor disputes and, and traffic stops. And from my own experience, you know, my own shooting resulted from a simple traffic stop at two in the morning. You know, someone just swerved across a couple lanes and that initiated a traffic stop that led to a, a pretty intense uh, shootout. Let's talk about that moment. Um, I, I know it's been a while for you, but can you take us back to that moment that you survived an officer involved shooting? What was it like and what was going through your, your head at that time? Well, it was really interesting. It was. It wasn't anything I expected for sure. Although as the officer and I, my, my fellow officer, Aaron Maldonado and I approached the, the vehicle, we got a sense that there was a gun in the car and we, we just, we just knew it. Um, we couldn't see one, but we just, we just felt it. And probably three, four minutes into the stop, uh, it looked like the driver was going to bail on foot. So I began running after him thinking, okay, this is going to be a foot chase. And as I got to the rear bumper of the vehicle, uh, the driver was out, turned, and shot initially. And that first shot threw me to the ground. Um, thank God it, it didn't hit me. Um, God was really looking out for me that day. But, um, then I popped up, and we get into a running gunfight through this hotel parking lot. And um, it turns out it was all because this 18-year-old kid had a warrant for a homicide that I had no idea about, and he didn't want to go to jail for it. Um, and... Uh, he ended up getting shot in the butt, and um, thankfully, thank God, he survived and was able to uh, answer for his crime, both in the homicide and in the shooting, and, uh, you know, spent some time in prison for it. But that doesn't always happen, and as we can tell, like with Officer Webster and, and Officer Jarrett, you know, sometimes those shootings don't turn out as lucky as they did for me. Absolutely. As you mentioned, very similar circumstances for all three of these incidents where it was just a, a traffic stop. You didn't know the circumstances mm -hmm. behind the person who you're pulling over and um, that ultimately led to, uh, you know, the suspect pulling out a gun. Uh, for, for your family, when they heard about this, what was it like for them when, when they realized how close to danger you got that day? I think they're just in shock more than anything you know when when you get a call at three in the morning um, thank god they got the call from me and not from a supervisor or someone else giving them giving them worse news you know it was me saying hey uh, i was just in a shooting but i'm okay i can't tell you much right now but um when i get home i'll be able to let you guys know what happened and i'm sure that that was terrifying for them to receive that call but um you know as the officer you're worried about one at that time I was worried about apprehending the suspect because he was still at large. Um, he had gotten away and hidden in a dumpster. So we didn't, we didn't find him for a couple hours, but you know, the focus is still on the job at hand. And then I get sequestered and put into a police car and wait for my lawyer and, and all of the rigmarole that comes with being involved in a shooting that the public doesn't ever see. Rob Mitchell, I want to thank you once more to, for joining us um, and giving us some more insight on, on what it's like to be an officer involved in this type of situation. It was my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me.